I've been wanting to build the ultimate gaming setup for ages and the time has finally come. I've picked up Corsair's insane Platform 6 gaming desk and loads of awesome goodies to make this setup possible and build truly the best setup I believe you can assemble right now. I'll be walking through everything that makes this setup possible and why I picked the parts that I did and looking at performance a little bit later. So without any further ado, let's dive into it after a quick word from today's video sponsor. Shift the rules with the Ducky Project D Outlaw, made from premium materials with a CNC machined aluminium case and gasket mount switches. It's a keyboard that looks and feels the part. Build it yourself with various play options and a range of colors to choose from and create the perfect keyboard for you. Your favorite switch? That's totally up to you. Learn more about the Ducky Project D Outlaw keyboard or pick one up for yourself at the first links in the description down below. Let's start by looking at the heart of any gaming setup, the PC. Now, spoiler alert, I want to drive either two 4K monitors or a high-end super ultra-wide. So whatever I pick for the build has got to be powerful. And my latest for thousand dollar gaming PC build might just about fit the bill. It's got an RTX 4090, giving us of course top of the range gaming performance. It gets no better than this at 4K. With a Ryzen 7 7800X3D, the best and fastest gaming CPU on the market, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, 64 would have been nice but a bit overkill really, while the whole thing is built inside of Corsair's 5000D Airflow. I've also hooked it up with Corsair's IQ Link range from the cooler to the fans, giving us loads of control is completely overkill if I'm being really honest with you. You can find a full parts list for everything included in this build in the description below or check the full video out in the card section now. For the rest of the setup I wanted to go for the best of the best in every category and that stems right from things like the headset to the keyboard, mouse, controller, speakers, you name it, we're going overboard. As far as the headset goes this is one of Corsair's latest options. It's the HS80 Max. I like the original HS80. It reviewed well here when we looked at it what feels like years ago now available in white or black you can read our full review on the website we were pretty impressed with this headset when we reviewed it in full of course there are loads of other options at this price point logitech have got some awesome high-end gaming headsets while the likes of steel series razor or even a standardized pair of headphones with a separate mic are also worth considering as far as keyboard goes this is where we've pushed the boat out and gone for something just a little bit special in my personal setup at home i'm currently rocking a custom built keyboard from ducky with with tactile blue switches, some awesome keycaps. I think it looks sick. Some people love it, some people hate it, and we're gonna go for the same vibe again, except this time I've picked up the Ducky Tinker Project D. Now this is really cool because we can pick the exact switches that we want. We can go for the exact design of keycaps. It gives you so much flexibility when it actually comes to the design that you want for your setup. This has got a nice sort of white backplate with three different adjustability heights. So standard with no feet, or you can have the mini feet, or you can have the big feet for loads of customization. It uses a standard five pin hot swap design for actually inserting the switches. As I say, I've gone for some tactile blue ones for this build. And to me, if heaven was in a bag, it would look like this. They are rated by the manufacturers being very loud, which is exactly how I like them. Just wait for this. I bet you didn't think you'd be listening to keyboard ASMR on the GeekerWatch channel. Oh, I'm excited. For anyone who hasn't built their own keyboard before, it's dead easy. Literally, just line the switch up with the actual socket, push it in, and that's it. How easy is that? All we need to do now is repeat that another 50 something times and then we'll have ourselves a full keyboard. Really, really nice design and the board itself without any of the switches or anything else is actually really light. So I'm gonna go ahead, pop all of the switches in and then add in my interesting set of keycaps. Can you see what I mean when I said it was a bit out there? Either way, I think it's gonna look great. Let me pop all of these onto my new lovely clicky keyboard and see how it looks. What a beauty. Now I have made one slight error. I've ordered the wrong enter key while I ordered the wrong layout and then I've got the wrong enter key. So ignore this slightly peculiar enter layout. I'll go ahead and fix that at a later date. But for now, the keyboard is done. I'm going to pop the keyboard and the mouse and all the other peripherals onto this really cool extended mouse pad design. Bit of black, bit of white should set it all off quite nicely. So what are we waiting for? Start getting this thing put together. Also going to pop on the mouse choice at this stage, the Corsair M75 Air. It's wireless both in terms of 2.4 gigahertz on USB and Bluetooth and weighs just 60 grams. Super lightweight, minimal cables, exactly what I want for this setup is starting to come together. I'm also going to bring in the PC at this stage. Sort of forgot how heavy this was and place it on the side extension piece. Oh, 
of the Corsair Platform 6. I've realized I've not really spoken about the desk very much, and I'll be honest, it was one of the main pieces of inspiration for this video. When Corsair announced they were entering the desk game, I was a little bit like, Corsair? Furniture, really? But it's actually very cool. Now, there's a few different versions of it. This is the all singing, all dancing Platform 6 Creator Edition. And let me talk you through a few of the key features. Now, of course, it has height adjustability. You can move the desk up like so, and it says it can support, I think, up to 70 kilograms of payload, so your heavy PCs are more than fine. And of course, you can set presets like on any other sit-stand desk. Would have liked to have seen four presets rather than two, but it is what it is. As far as tops go, you can get it with this kind of like dark wood finish, or you can get a more synthetic plain black material. While the creator version comes with this big frame. Now they call this like the Algato multi-mount frame. Basically, it uses universal T-channels and a pegboard to allow you to mount basically anything. That includes a monitor arm, which we can place on the middle just here. It also includes these side speaker shelves, which we'll be using in a moment. You name it, you can plug it in, whether you've got a webcam or some Algato key lights, or even just normal lights from another brand, will all in theory work just fine with this. Cable management options are also very cool. So you've got this sort of like cable cubby, if you will. So not only can you take the cover off, but there's room to store cables inside. And there's a USB-C and USB-A port in there. You also get this extension strip, which you can mount on the top of the desk. This is obviously the UK version, but you can get a US version with the US desk. And then underneath, you've got loads of cable management room as well. It really is one of the easiest desks to actually cable manage. The whole thing isn't particularly cheap. I'm going to cut straight to the chase. And there are a few things about this desk that could be better. This rubberwood finish, for example, is a little bit prone to dents and scratches, as detailed in our full review linked in the card section now. I also think it's a little bit pricey, and these PC extension shelves, which are extra, are quite cool. But they do make it massive and are perhaps not advisable for everyone. I think if it was me, I would just pick up one extension piece for the PC. I think the second extension piece is actually not necessary and just makes the whole thing actually far too big. One thing that the speaker shelves do allow us to do, though, is mount ourselves these. Now, this is the NZXT relay set. Now, you might think, hang on a second, NZXT makes speakers? Yes, yes, they do. And they're actually quite good. Now, you can buy these as part of various different kits. You can get them as a standalone item just these two speakers themselves. You can buy the subwoofers, like another £100, $100. You can also buy their new like mixing kit. There's loads of audio gear they've come out with. For this setup though, I'm going to opt for the speakers and the subwoofer only. I was really impressed with these. I think without the sub, they lack quite a lot of low end. But considering how much smaller they are than some of the other bookshelf speakers we've used, they're not too bad. Yes, there are some slightly cheaper options than this, but they do genuinely sound very good. And for people that want a really easy plug and play solution, they're actually very recommendable. The speaker shelves are adjustable in height as well, so you can get them to the perfect setup, but I think that looks quite good. The final piece of the puzzle before looking at the monitors, which I'm very excited for, is the controller. I actually have to admit, this is my first non-standard Xbox or PlayStation controller full stop, and it's the new Scuf Envision Pro. Now, picking this thing up is like going from driving a uh, um, Honda Jazz to a Ferrari. It, it, it's unbelievable. Now, you get these programmable pads on the rear, which you can basically program to be trigger keys or to anything else, allowing you to massively, massively minimize your reaction times and give you a competitive edge. You also get these customizable buttons on the front, which link with Corsair IQ, because of course they do, which you can also customize to your heart's content. And on the rear paddles here, if you actually flick the included notch backwards, you can massively reduce the throw depth of each of the triggers. So there you go. So that's it on sort of full mode. And then if we move it over, that's it on small actuation mode, allowing you to massively increase the number of shots you can take, speed up your trigger presses. It's honestly kind of incredible and I love it. So that's going to pop in the setup. But you're probably thinking, James, what about a monitor or monitors? Now, I'm actually going to give you guys a couple of options here. The first is this. Oh my word. This thing is absolutely crackers. This is the Acer Predator X45, the most insane monitor I think I've ever seen. This thing's got an 800R curve, which is actually kind of aggressive, 3440 by 1440 resolution, 45 inch screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, and a 0.01 millisecond response time. Now, this is gonna be the ideal ultra wide one monitor gaming solution. And if I actually carry it over carefully to the desk, you can see that that for a one monitor immersive gaming experience, it doesn't get much better. However, for day-to-day -day use, for productivity tasks, for just 
dead in work done, it perhaps isn't quite as home as another solution. And one thing that obviously the stand is going to do is take up quite a lot of desk space. And that is where this contraption comes in. Now, this is a dual monitor arm provided with the Platform 6 desk that actually supports two 32 inch 4K panels. So I reached out to our friends at MSI and went, MSI? Pretty please, with a cherry on top, could we borrow a couple of your 32 inch 4K panels to make this setup a reality? So we'll try this out later, we'll compare the two configs side by side, but for now, let's get this thing on and mount a pair of 4K 32 inch monitors. I think the best idea is gonna be to try and actually get this arm onto the mount, yes. And then I can add in this. Now this is MSI's 323 UPF. It's a 4K, 160 Hertz, rapid IPS gaming monitor. And it's just about within, I think the eight kilogram per monitor weight limit of the arm on this desk. And I've got two of them. And this is where I can show off one of the cool features of the monitor arm. It's got a quick release plate on it, meaning we can just install the monitor plate down here and slide it into place in a moment. You get these little separators or stoppers as well which allows us to elevate the actual quick release plate from the back of the monitor so nothing catches. The whole thing is pretty easy and pretty seamless really. And a few turns of the screwdriver later and we should have ourselves a monitor that is ready to be installed onto the desk. Then it's just the easy task of actually attaching them to the monitor stand. I'm quite nervous for this stage, but it should be a pretty easy, seamless job. There we go. So we're into the actual stand itself. Pull the pin back, that drops the monitor in. Now you'll notice the monitor is tilting, but it's not sagging too much. I think we just need to tighten up this piece just here with an Allen key on the left-hand side to stop the monitor from sagging quite so much. Couple of turns just to increase the tension on the monitor, not too much, just slightly. And I'm hoping then when I lift the monitor up, it stops falling. Look at that, amazing. And it should just position nicely off on the right hand side of the desk. So happy and it's totally adjustable. We can put it down, it holds position. We can tilt it up, it holds position. We can lift it up nice and high, it holds position. Just need to repeat it for the second monitor. After a bit of a struggle, we managed to get both the monitors on. I think they're actually looking really, really good. Now just the small task of cable management. If you look at some of the underneath of this desk, there are some really good cable management options, which should make the next stage of the whole process a bit easier. Got to wire up the displays and all the peripherals to the PC, make sure the sit stand functionality on the desk is wired up, get the speakers going, and then also dress the pegboard at the rear to make it look just that little bit more interesting. And then we should have ourselves a completed setup. Would you just look at that? The setup is now built. The PC looks incredible and the dual monitor setup, which I think I'm settling on as the best and most practical bet looks amazing. It means we can leverage the dual monitor arms and of course get this amazing floating monitor design. I should also point out this, which is Thunder X3's latest chair. I'm not normally a big fan of gaming chairs, but this thing's a little bit different. You've got this really cool sort of 3D lumbar support, which actually provides far more support for me and a really nice cushiony headrest. You get a sort of footrest included in the box as well, while these padded armrests make it a gaming chair that's actually worth considering. So often gaming chairs are a rip off and you should never pay the money they asked for. But this is actually really comfortable and has a really deep seat base that actually adjusts back and forward for maximum comfort. Now we're in the setup, the monitors, the 4K monitors look amazing. And of course, there's only one thing for it. Let's see if we can load up a couple of games. So let's jump into Steam. I'm gonna launch up F1 2023 first of all, so I can try my fancy new scuff controller. And then after that, I'm gonna try out a bit of Apex Legends so I can see how my new Ducky keyboard performs. Of course, the mouse and our surround sound, Dolby Atmos HS80 Max headset. Let's take a quick look at the visual options that I have gone for. Wanna make sure we're running at 4K as well to get the best out of our 40, 90 pound PC. So video mode, high settings across the board, and of course, 4K, lovely stuff. And with that, there's only really one thing left to do, and that is to jump into a game of Formula One and see what the kind of frame rate situation is gonna be looking like. Frame rate in the top left corner as well to keep an eye on. Hopefully we can break that triple digit mark, especially at 4K, which would be awesome to see. I'm actually quite nervous, I'm feeling the pressure. Controller feels good though so far. Oh, we had a bit of a frame drop there, what's going on? Oh my God, we're at 10 frames a second, that's not good. Whoa, oh dear, dear, dear. Oh, okay, we're back. We're at 170 now, apparently, ah! Oh! That sort of threw me off at the start, but, but it's okay. No idea what that frame rate situation was though. Just these weird things kind of happen sometimes. Gonna take it out by our own teammate. Oh, let's not knock him out. Oh, dearie me. Terrible start. This is where I bring it back. Lovely move. Oh, beautiful. The comeback is on. 
Fastest lap of the race. Oh, yes, I am on fire. Frame rate wise, which is probably what you're more bothered about. Oh, I can't concentrate and see the frame rate. Frame rate, 227 FPS. I have absolutely no idea what happened at the start. I think our PC lost the plot a little bit, but I'm glad to say we've recovered it now. I'm sitting in comfort. The screen looks amazing. And this controller feels absolutely epic as I drive off the circuit. Why don't we try some first person shooter games next of all and see how it performs in those. Oopsie. Oh dear, I think my race might be over. Next up is a little bit of Apex Legends. So let's again check out the settings menu and see where we land. So video settings, let's run at 4K, why not? V-Sync disabled, reflex, we can turn that on, why not? Anti-aliasing, TSAA, texture streaming, we can knock that up to ultra, ambient occlusion high, everything else on high. Lovely stuff, let's apply all of those settings. Should see a noticeable improvement in the actual visual resolution and quality. We do indeed. Frame rate again in the top left. Let's hit ready and see where we go. Visually looking great so far. About 100 FPS as it renders the world in, but that should go up. Yeah, 115, 120, good to see. Graphically looks amazing. And MSI's 323 UPF monitors look really, really good in my opinion. Ah! I'm in. Right, time to get some weapons. 12 seconds later. Being shot at already. One minute, 37 seconds later. Yes, there we go, there's one kill. Big, oh no! Oh no, 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 bad start. Terrible start, terrible, terrible start. No. Oh, oh it was, didn't last very long, did it? Either way, though, the game looked great. Set up performing super well. What more is there to say other than the fact that I need to improve my Apex skills a little bit? Couple of things I do want to do, though, before we wrap up. First is test the mic quality on this headset. I'm going to do this by testing it Windows Voice Recorder. So you're currently listening to our default studio mics. And now we'll switch over to the mic on the HS80 Max. Not bad for a headset mic. Of course, our expensive studio mics are a stupidly high benchmark. But I think it's always good to know that the mic that you've got on your headset is more than good enough for communicating with friends on Discord and just doing all the stuff that a headset mic should be able to do. The other thing I wanted to do is test out these NZXT speakers. I talked earlier about how they're pretty good, but just how good? So I've loaded up one of our favorite songs on no copyright sounds. Take a listen. Sounds pretty good so far, but not too loud. We can push the volume a little bit more quite easily. Definitely adequate bass, but we've tuned it down on the sub because it can be a bit overwhelming. But I'm really happy with it. What do you guys think of these speakers? What do you think of the setup? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. It's the day.